On this edition of Eagle News, we have a Christmas song for you, as well as the seven day forecast and, of course, more coach interviews. Ho, ho, ho! Welcome to this edition of Eagle News. We have some excellent stuff for you, especially that nice Christmas song I just mentioned. But first of all, we're going to start right off the bat with the seven-day forecast. This is Jordan Casey, and I'm wearing a nice red shirt. Merry Christmas to all of you. And here's the seven-day forecast. On Friday, we have a high of 51 degrees, and it is windy. Oh! And now on a Saturday, is 41 degrees, and it is partly cloudy. And Sunday, it's... Fully cloudy, it's 51 degrees. Can you believe it? Ike certainly can't. And now on Monday, the sun came out. Nice, and it's a high of 58. That's a nice toasty day. And now on Tuesday, whoa, 59 degrees, and it is sunny again. Ooh, it's continuously toasty, it's great. And now on uh, uh, Wednesday, it's a high of 44 degrees, but the clouds came back, of course. And on a Tuesday is a high, excuse me, Thursday actually, is a high of 27 degrees and it is partly cloudy. The week tried to get good at life, except it didn't. Back to you in the studio. So starting right off the bat, we have a Christmas song, but wait, I want to introduce you to someone. This is my wonderful mannequin, Eugene. Excellent man. I, he, he's a bit of a shy guy, but... He's an excellent person once you get to know him. All right, let's go to that Christmas song. Brock Smith, he'll show you all about it. Well, Jordan, it's not your typical snowy Christmas, but I got something for us that'll get us into the spirit. Let's check out our GVTV staff's Christmas song. It's the most beautiful time of the year. Lights fill the streets, spreading so much cheer. I should be playing in the winter snow. I'ma be under the mistletoe I don't wanna miss out on the holiday But I can't stop staring at your face I should be playing in the winter snow I'ma be under the mistletoe Wow, thank you guys for the amazing song. Anyways, let's head over to Parker Stone, who's with Coach Carpino, to see how the football season went this year. Okay, I'm here with Coach Carpino. Um... So, Coach, what are your thoughts on the 2020 season? Uh, it really was a fun year. Uh, I tell you, Parker, the funnest part of it was the way you guys came out and really just decided to go day to day. I think it made a huge difference in us. I think we just went out. We had fun. We, we worked hard at practice, thinking that we might not get to come back tomorrow, so we wanted to make the best of today. So it ended up being a lot of fun for me, and I know it was for you guys too. What was your favorite part about the season? Uh, my favorite part about the season, uh, you know, Parker, I, I love going to practice, especially on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, those, those work days to me, uh, those practices fly by. So, I mean, games are awesome, obviously, but, but, you know, you don't perform well in games. You don't get ready during the week. So the Tuesday, Thursday thing for me, uh, I, I feel like when I walk out on the field, I feel like that there's no way I should be getting paid to do what I'm doing. That's how much, you know, how lucky I feel. You know, the downside is coaching with people like Coach Pate and, you know, some of those guys. That, you know, I don't really like Coach Pate. But other than that, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are you looking forward to the most after you retire? What was that? What are you looking forward to most after you retire? Uh, well, <laughs> I think – I think I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to coach down there. So I don't know that I'm going to retire just yet. Uh, I'd like to put in five years uh, down in Arkansas teaching and coaching, and then after that, Parker, uh, I think I'll just fish and nice. hang out with my wife. That'd probably be it. Fourteen. You know, Jordan, we just can't seem to get rid of the Stone family. Of course, you can never get rid of the Stone family. Now let's head to Josh, who's with Parker's dad, Coach Stone. Uh, this is Coach Stone, a Green Valley defensive lineman coach and head boys track coach, and uh, I'm going to interview him on some questions today. So, uh, Coach Stone, when when did you first start coaching football? Well, it shows my age, but um, 1999 was my first year. I started uh, 
coaching. That was my first year here at Green Valley. Um, and first year starting uh, coaching, I actually started in the middle school as a middle school coach my first few years, um, then got moved up to the high school. Sweet. That 1990, I thought you were a lot younger. No, not going <laughs> to be no offense, coach. Thanks, Sawyer. Uh, why did you coach D-line? Um, I, I've just always enjoyed, like, you know, games are won and lost at the line. I mean, you know, every position is important, but, you know, in the trenches is – you, you know, where, where it really matters. So I played a little D line growing up um, before I decided to lose a little bit of weight. Um, so uh, just something I've really enjoyed um, and, you know, doing it for so long and going to clinics years after years and stuff. I just, I believe that it's what I bring um, the most to the football team is just the knowledge there. All right. Sweet, sweet. Uh, who's your favorite NFL team? Well, I got to go Broncos. I mean, you know that, right? <laughs> so here's the next question. Were, were you like a – Were did you start watching with Elway or were you the pa Peyton Manning bandwagon? That, that's okay. my – so, Okay. So my first year that I really started liking the Broncos was because of John Elway because when I first started watching football in general, um, John Elway was in college and I, I followed, him, followed him in college. You know, he's – really good Stanford University where he went um, was pretty good um, so at that point when he got drafted by Denver um, they kind of became my team you know ever since he retired I've still been somewhat of a Broncos fan but not as much as when he played because it was mainly because of John Elway that I started following and liking the Broncos. Uh, so you, the Grand Valley Eagles, they won uh, districts again this year, and they went to the uh, state playoffs. What was the reason for this success that we had this year? Well, you know, I think there's several things, but one thing that's you know, I've thought of, especially the last couple of weeks since the season ended, um, the one thing that probably helped more than anything, honestly, is like the bond that the players had, um, the closeness – you know, not just on the field, but off the field, um, and especially through the pandemic. Um, you know, a lot of the players together tried to do what they could do to keep our season alive, you know, wearing the mask, being social distance and all the stuff that they had to do um, and still be able to try to, you know, hang out when they could um, safely um, and encouraging each other, you know, in, in practice and outside of practice. I don't know if we've ever had a team um, that's been so close, not just with kind of the upperclassmen, um, but but the upperclassmen, including the underclassmen, and just as a whole, the closeness of the whole group, it really says a lot. And I think it, it really um, has a lot to do with the success that we had this year. Sweet, sweet. Uh, my final question, uh, you know, every athlete, I believe that, you know, that they want to get better every year. As a coach, what what would you want to improve on? Well, you know, one thing that I always say myself is that you can't ask a player to do something that you're not willing to do yourself as a coach. So, you know, I, I said I started in 1999, which is a long time, but you're, you've never been around too long um, or, you know, coached enough to think that you know it all or to think that you, you know, you, you can stop learning. It's it's always a learning process. And I always try to, to pick people's brains, people that have been around longer than me, people that, you know, I think that are kind of an expert in what they do. So I always, you know, we go to clinics every year in the off season and try to pick up different things that other coaches are doing um, to make our team successful. So it's just kind of that lifelong learner uh, thought that I think really can help me as a coach. And I think that's what all of our coaches do a really good job at, um, you know, in Grain Valley is always trying to improve so that we can help our team. Thank you, Josh. As you know, you can't be in the Christmas spirit without mentioning NHS. NHS is a great club here at Grain Valley High School that does lots for the community. Let's head over to Riley, who's with Miss Taylor, to find out more about NHS. So I was wondering how COVID really affected NHS this year. 
COVID affected first us being able to, you know, meet together as whole groups, which was always something that Miss Michael and I looked forward to is being able to see um, all of our kids together, you know, being able to participate in our activities, um, our conversations, our meetings. Um, we also have not been able to have um, like guest speakers come in that we normally do throughout the year to help our seniors, especially you know how to do service once they leave Green Valley High School and how they can continue to do service once they leave. Um, it's also very much affected how we had to rethink how to, to serve our community, our school, um, the world, and for Children's Mercy. The biggest boundary with COVID has been, I know that meetings have been really hard, but beyond that, think trying to get service projects in. Um, yeah. Everything is so shut down and not allowing, you know, outside forces to come in to help. Um, and so I think that's probably been the biggest thing is having to come up with like these new ideas of how, what does service look like um, in, in a COVID world? The numbers from this year of people who actually have their service projects done or had them planned, are they really different than last year? So you know that in March of last year, you know, we had to shut down completely on our service projects. So, of course, the thought process of um, the numbers from last year were going to be down anyway. And this year, actually, um, what people are coming up with, our numbers are about equal about where they were this time last year. We're not really seeing... Um, any issues as we come up with these new ideas or as students come up, like we've done some amazing things of like putting little notes in people's mailboxes to give them like a, you know, just an uplift in their day, sending um, cards to elderly people. Um, so many options that they've come up with that are just amazing about how they come up with these things and how amazing those ideas are. So I would actually say we're sitting probably about the same spot where we were last year. COVID is less impactful, maybe not gone out of existence, obviously, but maybe when the vaccine comes out or something like that, are you guys planning on doing meetings completely in person again, or are you wanting to implement something of what we've done now with the Google Meets? So that will be dependent on um, the school district, to be honest. Okay. Um, if they allow us to come full force back and we can have all of all of us together again, um, that would be fantastic. We would love it. But I think that there's always going to be a nature now of a virtual presence for students who are virtual, who continue to stay virtual. Um, I think that we've kind of set up that that can happen. And so it makes me wonder how the district will continue even after COVID is not as predominant in our, you know, in our world, um, if they will continue continue offering virtual learning for students as well. So our goal is, yes, let's get us all back together. Let's get us all back doing um, projects together. Um, but it really will be up to what the district deems and what the health um, department and county decide um, of how we will move forward. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Now let's head back to Jordan in the studio. Thank you very much, Brock. Now here's the social media platforms right in front of you, all the clickables, all the expandables, all of the excellent stuff you need to view our content. And I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. It has been quite a year. Hopefully we can make it very nice ending. Hope you have a fantastic day.